Today's daf yomi is Baba Kama Ayin Dawid. Today's daf yomi is actually not a simple daf. Uh, it's not the most simple daf in the entire Talmud, and we'll do the best we can. Today's daf yomi will start on the last line on 73 b but actually we have to remind ourselves of a statement that Rabba made. We had, she had said on 73 b around 20 lines on the bottom. Now, we've been discussing the concept of Adam Zomamin. Adam Zomamin are witnesses whose very testimony is impeached because the other witnesses come along and said, you could not have given that testimony. You were with us in a different place. Imanu Ayisim. Now, in order for Adam Zomamin to be considered Adam Zomamin, their testimony has to have been otherwise valid testimony. If it had not been otherwise valid testimony, then they can't, they can't be punished like they tried to do because they weren't able to actually do anything. So therefore, it has to have been otherwise valid. Comes along Rava on yesterday's daf, and Rava says, if there are witnesses that were contradicted, that they were first contradicted and only then impeached, meaning to say, that first they were contradicted, and only after that were they impeached, and then under those circumstances, we're still going to say that they're capable of being impeached the people of becoming Adam Zomim, which is not necessarily intuitive because if they were first contradicted and that their testimony is not going to be accepted. But still, Rabbi says that if they were hukashu, they were rebuked and they were contradicted and then impeached, their testimony is still capable of becoming Adam Zomim because is because the contradicting is the beginning of the hazama. And then Gemara says, the Gemara says, what's the proof for this idea? The proof of this idea is from a Brisa, which says, it's from a Brisa, which says that in a case where a person first knocks out the, uh, the blinds the eye of the slave and then knocks out his tooth, and then the master said that, that it doesn't make any sense to learn the Brisa like that because, because, the blinding of the eye and then knocking out the tooth, and then the, the master said that, the way Rabbah understands it is that there are three actual uh, witnesses, that there are three sets of witnesses, and the second set was contradicted by the, by the first set. The second set contradicts the first set, and then the third set comes along and declares them as Zolman. And so that's going to be called, uh, that's going to be called this scenario. So that's how Rabbah proves, Shmamina Achasha Tchilas Azama. So Amar Abaye, Abaye says, no, that's not what we're talking about here. Abaye says, that's not going to be approved. No, in the bottom line of 73b, Abaye says, lo, the Avchinu Vazminu, it's not necessarily the case that we're talking about three sets of witnesses there. It could be talking about two sets of witnesses, but the second set of witnesses reversed the scenario and said, you had said that we're talking about that you blind the eye and knock out the tooth. But it, but actually, it's possibly the case that, that the second set was reversing that and then declared them Zolman. And so therefore, we're able to understand that price and it makes sense without having to say that there's a third set. What's the source for Abaye? And Abaye says on top of 74a, me to say, so Abaye is going to say the position that Akasha is not the beginning of Hazama. So that once you have Akasha, you can't have a zama anymore. And what's the source for Abai to say on top of 74a? Me the safe of a mepech vazama. Because Abai says this brighter has another aspect to it. And from the fact that this other aspect, this this concluding part of the Braitha is the case where there's only two sets of witnesses. Excuse me, where you were mepach and then you did the azama, Rishanami. So therefore, the first cause also is the mepach vazama. The first case also must be that scenario. And how do we know that the second part of the price is the Mepa Vazama? The Kotani Seifa, because the concluding court says, Mi'idanu as Ishponi, Shehipio as Shein Abdo. He says, we testify about this person that he knocked out the tooth of his slave, Vistima as Eino. So we reversed it. First he knocked out the tooth, and then he blinded him. Sharei Avet Omer came, because the slave says that. Minimsu Zomamin, and they're discovered to be Zomamin, meaning to say that it was a false claim. Mishalmin to me ayin l'rav, that under those circumstances, they should pay the value of the eye to the master. 
Now, under those circumstances, they pay the value of the eye to the master. Now, this doesn't make sense. Hey, Chidami, what's the scenario? If the second set of witnesses don't admit to the fact that the master wounded the slave at all, then they, then they were testifying falsely that he blinded him. He didn't do anything to him. They shouldn't just pay the value of the... Uh, 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 he shouldn't have just pay the value of the eye. He should pay the whole value of the slave. So everybody admits that, it must be that the scenario is that everybody admits that he wounded him on some degree. And they, they reversed the case and then they were, and then they said that they were Zomimim. And, and now the Gemara just does a little bit to clean it up and says, what's the scenario that we're talking about here? Either come Achre, Achure, if you're going to say that the second set of witnesses came and testified that the wound happened after the first one, Hani Basrai, either come Achre, Achure, Hani Basrai, Akati Dmei Evel Rav Vaishlumi. They should still have to pay the value of the. They should still have to pay the value of the. Uh, slave to the master because they were trying to get him to be free because they testified that that if the actual striking happened after their testimony then they were still at the time they lied they were trying to get the slave completely free and so they should have to pay the whole value of the slave so the the because when they said you have to release him he's still not yet at that point being required to be released so it must be that what we're talking about is the kamikadme kadume hani basrai so it must be that the latter witnesses are testifying about an event that came before the earlier event. And the Idolo Amabadin, and furthermore, it must be the case that they had gone to the court. Because if they had not yet gone to the court for a judgment, Akati to make Kuya Evil around by Shlomin, then he should have still had to pay the entire value of the slave, the Kati Gavri or Machayev, because he still was not responsible for anything yet. So it must be Ella to Amabadin. It must be that they had gone to court. Okay, so now the Gemara has established that according to Rava, we're talking about a case that that Hazama that 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 is the beginning of Hazama, and according to uh, according to Abaye, Hakasha is not the beginning of Hazama. Uh, uh, Rava says the Bryce is talking about three sets of witnesses, and Abaye says the Bryce is talking about two sets of witnesses. What's your question, Jeff? Well, if Rava's witnesses, I assume that means I believe it was Christ. How could you have the well? They hadn't. I. They had gone to the court. They had gone to the court, but had not yet been adjudicated in the court. That's the case. So the Gemara says, "Amoy Rav Acha Braid Rav Iko Rav Ashi Dukya de Rav Mehecha." How does Rav understand this idea that there are th- that Achasha is not that Achasha is the beginning of Azama? Where does he learn it out? If you want to say Ilema Miresha. If you want to say it's from the first clause, it's not necessarily the case. Reisha mi is the is the middle one really contradicting the first case, the first one in the first case. Even the lomitzami saudusa tavasayu kakaima, because even if even the ilomitzami, because if the second group would not become zomamim, even though. They're contradicted from the first one. Nevertheless, their actual testimony would actually not be contradicted, and it would, and it would actually be upheld. Why? The Dino because we would rule like them. Why? That they they said you pay the value of the tooth. The first group said you pay the value of the eye. The yes become because actually both cases are agreeing that you have to at least pay the value of the tooth. So the second second set of witnesses is not actually contradicted. Yeah, the first group is being contradicted, but the second group is not being contradicted at all. And so therefore, and so therefore it's not accurate to say that this that, that first case of the Mishnah. The the witnesses are contradicting the uh, that there's a kasha there at all, but, and that's part of hazama. So it can't be approved for Rava. That's what Rav Acha Braid Rav Ika says to Rav Ashi, and to Rav Ashi says, "You're right." Amar Rava Savar 
Reisha, so where is Rava's proof coming from? It's actually coming from the second set of the, the concluding case of the Brisa. So he says, Rava suffered me the Reisha B'Shalosh Kitos from the fact that the first case of the Brisa is dealing with three groups. So we're going to say from here, Seifa Nami B'Shalosh. The second case is also dealing with three sets of witnesses. V'diek mi Seifa. And he go, is going to conclude it from the concluding clause. What's the case of the concluding clause? He go into Asu Betre. The two witnesses came and said, He pio Sheno v'sima eno. The two witnesses came and say he knocked out his tooth and then he blinded his eye. Upaskino and Dina Apumayo. And we ruled like them. The Asu Betre Akrini. And then two other witnesses, so basically he has to pay the value of the eye. And then two other witnesses came and said, Sime Aseno Vipo Ashino. They said he knocked out his tooth. The Kama, the Kamachash, the Kamachashilu, Lani Kamai that they are contradicting the first one, because the first one says he has to pay the value of the eye, and the second one says he has to pay the value of the tooth. Vinim says, Zomam and Kamai, and then the first ones are discovered to be false witnesses. So therefore, Misham and Dmei Ayin Lerav. Therefore, they have to pay the value of the eye to the master because they said they only have to pay the, the second one said you have to pay the value of the tooth. Then the first one said you have to pay the value of the eye, and then they're discovered to be false witnesses. And if you want to say that contradiction is not the beginning of Azama, why would they have to pay anything? They were already contradicted. Now we see from here a proof for Rubber's position that the Achosha is the Tchilos Azama. That the contradiction is the beginning of the Azama. Yeah. The effect of that is that even though they're contradicted, we're still going to say that they can become Adam Zomamin. Exactly. They're still capable of becoming Adam Zomamin. Right. No financial liability. So Abaye says, Abaye Amokha Bishlama Raish Raish Sagili de Lo Shalosh Kitos. He says, I understand that the first case of the Brisa has to be at least three groups. Shore Katani Arav Omerkim, because it says the master says it means to say the master approves of this scenario. Ella Seifa Lamu Shalosh Kitos. Why does the concluding clause have to be three groups? Share are Evid Omar Kane, Evid Koldu Maymar. Evan would say any either one is okay. He says the Maimer Amar the Nichole the Nefakocher. He says I don't care which one of them are my things got knocked out. I'm going to be happy either way, whether it's the eye or the tooth, because either way I go free. So now Rabbi Zera challenges the Brisa, which is very unusual, says the Shita Mikabetis, because Rabbi Zera is considered an Amora, and Amora is the Brisas are authored by the Tanayim, which are which are a different era than the Amoraim. They're earlier, and usually an Amora can never argue against the 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 Tanoim. So if that's the case, this is unusual that they're not supposed to challenge the earlier sources. So Maskifla Rabbi Zera, so Rabbi Zera challenges him. He says, Ema Sima Eno. He says, Why don't I say that if he blinds the eye, Napuk Eno, he'll he'll go free. We're on top of seventy four B. He pio Sheno. If he knocks out the tooth, Napuk Pashenu, he'll go out for the tooth. Simas Eno Vipio Ashenu, but let's say he did both. He blinds the eye and he knocks out the tooth. Napuk Peeno Vishenu, let him go out with the eye and the tooth. Why do I assume that if he blinds the eye and then knocks out the tooth, that he has to pay money for the tooth? Why don't I say that's part of the same same um, thing he did to the eye and that he goes free and he doesn't have to pay a monetary penalty? So Abai says, I'm Rabbi Awech Amakra, Tacha say no, blow Tacha say no, it says you go free if you knock out the eye, not if you knock out the eye and the tooth. Tacha say no, you go free if you knock out the tooth, blow Tacha say no, but not if you knock out the tooth and the eye. Meaning to say, the verse says explicitly you go free if you knock out the eye or the tooth, and not if you knock out both. If you knock out both, you have to pay for the second one. Amar Avidi Bar Abin, Afano Nami Tanina. He says, We also learned this in a Braisa. It says the following. Let's say he, he's Let's say a robber robbed it on the basis of two, and then he's and he. What are we learning now? So Ravidi Bar Abin wants to teach us this idea, like Rava 
that Akasha is the beginning of Azdama, that even though they're contradicted, they could still become Adam Zomamin. How so? We learn it from our Mishnah because it says if he steals it on the basis of two and then he slaughters it and sells it on the basis of those witnesses, the Nimtu Zomamin, and then they're discovered to be Zomamin, Misham and Lois Akoli, that's to be five times the amount. Now, what's the scenario of our Mishnah? My love, they do al Isn't it, aren't we talking about a case where they testified about the theft? The Chazru, they eat do al and then they, and then they, then they testified about the slaughter. Behuzmu al and they were contradicted about the theft. The Chazru, Behuzmu al and then they were contradicted about the slaughter. But Kivan Shehuzmu al so since they were contradicted about the theft, the Gabi Tvicha, Havilu Mukhashin. So, so aren't we talking about a case? Where first they contradicted them about the. So let's let me just say it one more time. He says he stole on the base of two, and then he slaughtered on the on, on the same two witnesses, and then they discovered to be Zomamin. So then he has to pay the whole thing. Aren't we talking about a case where they were testified about the theft, then they testified about the slaughter, and then they were declared Zomamin about the theft, which means they were also declared contradicting about the theft. The Khadru Bahuzmuatvika, and then they go ahead and they were declared Zomamin about the slaughter. But since the Ha Kivan Shuzmu Agneva, but since they were already declared Zomin about the theft, the Gabi Tvika Abu Maklisha, they've also undercut the whole idea that they slaughtered it. So it's already contradicted. The Katani Mishaman Loasakol, and yet we still say that they were Zomamin on the slaughter. So it must be that Hakosha by itself does not disqualify you from becoming an aid zomain. If you're going to say that Akasha is not the beginning of Hazama, then why would you be paying for the slaughter? It's uh it's it's something that that you've already been contradicted. So we see from here that Akasha is the beginning of Hazama and so therefore even though you're contradicted you could become an aid zomain. But the slaughtering is irrelevant. Right. So that uh, they consider that they consider that a contradiction because the testimony of the slaughter is only relevant if it slaughters something that was stolen. If you slaughter something that we had this earlier in the Gemara, otherwise he could be slaughtering his own finger. But the Gemara understands that the uh, means you're you're con- not just contradicting some facts, you're contradicting the essence of the testimony. Anyway, so Gemara says, no, Hakamayaskinam Kikulun Shahuzmo at Vikatrio. No, here you weren't first declared Ozomim on the theft. You're first declared Zomim on the slaughter first. That's the issue. Ubiputa, and this dispute between Abai and Rabba about whether or not a is the beginning of Azama, this is actually the same dispute of this is actually the same dispute of the dispute between Abai and Rav is the same dispute of Rabbi Yochan and Rabbi Lazar. Because we say, Adam Shehokhashu of Asofus, Rabbi Yochan and Rabbi Lazar. It's the same dispute as Rabbi Yochan and Rabbi Lazar. Chad Amar Naragin. Let's say they were contradicted. And let's say they testified about a murder. They were contradicted about the testimony. And then afterwards, they were. And then afterwards, they were declared Zomin. So Chad Amar Naragin. One says that we're going to execute them as though they were Adam Zomin. And Chad Amar E Naragin. And one says we don't execute them as though they're zomim. The stayin the rebel lazer who the amar ain't eraglin. It must be the rebel lazer is the one who says they're not executed. Meaning to say that once you do akasha, you can no longer become adam zomim. The amar rebel lazer because rebel lazer taught adam shehuchashu ben nefesh. Let's say you have witnesses that test that their testimony that somebody else killed a person is contradicted. Lokin, we only give them lashes. The east dog that the rebel lazer who the amar eraglin. And if you say rebel lazer says they're killed. Am I looking? Why we give them lashes? It's still potentially possible for them to be executed. Anytime you can still potentially be executed, you don't get lashes. Ain't looking up. So it must be. Rabbi says once you have the akasha, they can't become zomim. And to stay him, to stay him. Gemara says, Loken, why, why do we give them lashes if you just contradict them about the testimony? Trave a train they knew. There's two witnesses against two witnesses. Machaz is Sam Khasahani, Smokhani. Why are you relying on the latter two witnesses who say he didn't kill him? Rely on the first two who says he did kill him. Why are you giving them lashes? I'm Rabbi, no, what's the case here? But Baharog Baragla, that the case, the, the case here is that the guy who the first two witnesses came along and said, hey, we saw this person, Ruben, get executed. Now all of a sudden, Ruben shows up in the court. So what do we do to those witnesses? They're now contradicted. 
So, so Rebel Lazar says we give the, those witnesses lashes, even though if witnesses came and were declared them Zomamen, we would be executing them. So it must be, Rebel Lazar says they wouldn't get executed under those circumstances. So now we have the next Mishnah, a beautiful Mishnah here. The Mishnah says, Let's say you have two witnesses who testify that they stole. And one witness says that they then, they then slaughtered or sold it. Or uh, he admits it on his own, that he, sold, that he slaughtered or sold it. Then he pays double for the theft. But he doesn't pay for the, for the slaughter or the sell. Why? Because one witness is not enough. Or if you admit to the penalty, that's also you don't get penalized. Gun of a tabach Shabbos, or gun of a tabach Let's say you slaughtered it or sold it on Shabbos, or you slaughtered and sold it to idolatry. Gun of Michel Av. And so if you slaughter or sold it on Shabbos, then we say the principle of Kimwe Bidarab Mine. We only apply the more severe penalty of violating Shabbos and not the penalty of slaughtering or selling. And so you wouldn't have to pay the fine there. Let's say he slaughtered it to idolatry. Let's say he stole it from his father, who may suffer, and his father died. And then he slaughtered it or sold it. Or let's say he stole it and you consecrated it. In all those cases, you don't pay the four or five times penalty. And the Gemara is going to go through each one. Maybe Shimon, yeah. Speak louder, a little louder, because the cold Torah in the base measures is so loud, so we need to speak it a little louder. Yes. The, the, the penalty for two is coming because he stole it. The penalty for four or five is because he, is because he sold it or slaughtered it. So if he admits it, we have a concept of moda pekinas. If you admit to something which otherwise you'll be penalized, you're exempt from the penalty. So one witness also you're exempt. So now, so now Rabbi Shimon says, Kachim Let's say there's a uh, a sacrifice, a garbon you dedicate to the temple, and you said, I'm responsible. If the, whatever happens to this animal, I'm responsible for it. Then somebody steals it and sells it or slaughters it. Misham Tashumi Then that person has to pay you four or five times an ounce, even though it's hectic, but because you said I'm responsible to pay for this animal if it gets uh, slaughtered, I have to replace it. So therefore, under these circumstances, you have to pay the four or five times the amount. So then you had a question, Hobbs? Speak louder, my friend. No, no, no. You you only would get the death penalty if they did it. If they, they you only get the death penalty if you slaughter it. If they slaughter it, they they're the ones who did the action. What? You have to replace it. That's what it means. There. Okay. Yeah, I always have to be precise. So then, the, then the it just says, um, but. But if you're not responsible for it, you're potter, you're exempt because they stole something from the temple and the penalty of four or five times the amount doesn't apply under those circumstances. So the Lord says, if it's on the, if it's you slaughter it or sell it on the basis of one witness, then you then they don't have to pay the four or five times the amount. Pshita, that's obvious. Amri, Pshita, so this is obvious. So the Lord says, Amri, you no, know, so the people in the yeshiva taught. On the basis of his own testimony is like on the basis of one witness. Just like on the basis of one witness, if another witness would come and testify about this, you'd be responsible and you'd have to pay the double. So too, even if you admitted to it, in which case you're exempt, if there would be other witnesses that would come after the fact, Mechayev, you'd be all of a sudden, even though you admitted to it at first, if then two witnesses came, you'd be responsible to pay for the damages. Why? It's coming to exclude the position of Rav, of Rav uh, Topa Rafuna, that in the case where you admit to the penalty and then witnesses come, once you admit, you're always exempt. We say, no, not like that. Our mission is not like that because our mission says that it's like one witness. Just like if you have one witness, it's not liable. But if you have a second one who comes, you would be liable. So too, if you admit to something, you're not liable. But if then witnesses come, you would be liable. Now the Gemara says, let's analyze this statement. If, if you admit to a penalty and then the witnesses come, Rav says you're exempt. 
How can Rav Huna teach us in the name of Rav? Says Rav. Chista challenges him. A very, very uh, interesting story happened with Rav Gamliel. He blinded the eye of Tavi, his slave. Now, Tavi was a very special slave. Tavi was a Torah scholar. The Yerushalmi says he was worthy to get smifa. The Gemara in Sukkot says that we learn halachos from Tavi, his slave. The uh, Gemara tells us elsewhere that Rabbi Gamliel, when Tavi, when Tavi died, Rabbi Gamliel was mourning for him. He was sitting shiva. So there was an incident with Rabbi Gamliel. We blinded the eye of Tavi, his slave. And he was so happy. Why? Because he now, finally, his slave could go free. Prior to that, he wasn't allowed to free a slave because it says, This is the way the rabbinic mind works. Every day he was waking up, he says, I wish I could free my slave, but I can't. It's a, it's a lot. But now he blinded his eye. He says, oh, he gets to go free. He finds Rabbi Yoshua. And he says, don't you know that my slave Tavi is now going free? Amarlo, Lama, he says, why is he going free? I'm really sure. they know. I blinded his eye and I went to the court and admitted I did it. Amarlo, aim bid He says, uh, he says, he says, it's it's not it's not enough. Just because you're blinded an eye, that's not good. Why? Because you went to the court, uh Meaning to say, you're the one who testified about that. You're the one who said that you blinded his eye. And so therefore, it's not okay because you're Moda Bikinat. You admitted to it. And so therefore, he's not going to go free on the basis of your testimony. Because, but he says, and the reason why he doesn't go free is because you don't have any witnesses. So he says, that would imply that if there were witnesses, that he would go free. And we see from here that Moda Bikinat, you're Chayev. And because he says there's no witnesses, that's why he goes free. He says, so therefore he doesn't go free. But if there would be witnesses, then he would go free. Which is not like what Rav taught. So Rav Huna responds to No, Shami, Shani Rabbi Gamliel. The low Bifne Bez and Odi. No, this case of Rabbi Gamliel is different because Rabbi Gamliel did not admit it in front of the court, but he admitted it in front of Rabbi Yoshua. Uh, and when do we say Moda Bikinaz is Pater? Only when you admit it in front of the court. But if you admit it in front of, uh, but if you admit it in front of the bezdin, then we would say Adam is Potter. He didn't actually go to the court to admit it. He just admitted to Rabbi Yeshua. The witnesses are going to come and testify about him. So he wasn't so foolish. Rabbi Gamliel was not going to go to the court and claim it. Gemara says, Gemara says, wait, my Rabbi Yeshua Rabbi Yeshua was the head of the court. Gemara says Shalobah Bezdenavi, but he wasn't Shalobah Bezdenavi Kai. So Gemara says he wasn't actually standing in the court at that time, so it doesn't count. All right, we'll stop the recording here. We'll stop the recording here. A big shkoyach to everybody. We have. Uh,